Glad to have you guys again. You have a good weekend. Yeah. <laughs> Health wise. <laughs> <laughs> just just to just to let everyone know exactly what's been going on this week, man. The craziness, craziness from yesterday's game. We saw what happened. Uh, Manchester City just kept doing what they're doing as usual. Uh, some of the big boys drew. Aston Villa drew. Uh, but I guess uh, it's all about it's all about the games of today, isn't it, man? This is this is what happened today. Is what kept everyone going. Chelsea sneaked past Newcastle. That was a good result for them. Hillary, what can I say about Man United, man? Man United, classic, classic one. But before we get there, Steve, let's just start with Arsenal, man. That big game today, the Emirates finished 2-2 against Anna Slot's team. That's 13 games for Slot, 11 wins out of 13 games. Yeah, he's, he's, yeah. he's, he's, doing, he's doing what he needs to be doing. But from Arsenal's point of view, drop points at home. But at the same time, they just seem to be dropping players as well through injury at the moment, Steve. Yeah, yeah, it's quite it's quite unfortunate actually for for the team and Ateta himself because I believe after having the additions to the team, uh, the injuries have, re- have really quite come have come quite early in the in the season. Despite the other issues like having the red cards in the game, but he's he's now suffering. He's, he's, he's like he's getting he's, he's getting challenges left, right, and center. You see, he got one challenge of having red cards. Now trying to manage that. Now he's trying again to manage uh, uh, injuries of key players because I think today we finished the game without our starting back four, which is really yeah. is not good. So you can imagine what kind of uh, uh, <laughs> thoughts are going through his mind. I can't imagine his mind right now because you here managing one thing. You you're managing to sign more more extra players to the team. The moment you bring them in, your team starts suffering. I don't know what is happening in the in the training in the training grounds of Arsenal because yeah, when you see such things happening, now you see we have uh, Gabriel on the uh, sorry, yes, Saliba in the red card. Then Gabriel gets injured. Hope, hopefully that is not something that serious. Maybe just a knock that because I saw the Nunes uh, knee to knee was uh, quite. It can be really <laughs> it can be painful at that moment. So yeah. I think uh, honestly. Uh, the outcome is not disappointing because with the with the depth of of squad we have it's something uh i can live with because we tried our best because you see after after magales uh departure is when you see we started seeing salah because before that it was difficult we couldn't we couldn't see salah anywhere we could just see noon is uh, trying to break the defense so i'm not impressed with the result but it's a result i can live with because uh, there are things that are inevitable. The, <laughs> the players we're having, yes. But I, again, just to sum this up, I think uh, it's, a, it's, about, it's about high time. Uh, and I think we've ever had this uh, conversation with Hillary out uh, off the screen about Ateta getting the boys uh, to get used to the rotation so that the combinations can also be applied when the, the key players are missing. Because I think that is so key. Because the rotation is so important. Because I expect as much as we're having uh, replacements, the, when you're given a chance to get to a position, I expect you to step up. Star Starboy, anytime he impresses. And actually today, I don't know. Uh, personally, I think uh, uh, Pate played a very big role today. I didn't expect him to step up in that uh, off 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 his normal position. But and. A good game, not an impressive performance, but yeah. a, a result I can live with, yeah. Well, Hillary, if I was to bring you on this one, yeah, I mean, when you, when you look at this from Arsenal's point of view, yes, you drop points against Liverpool. Even Liverpool today, they drop points. Uh, Arsenal losing players to injury. You know, lack of players to be able to rotate the squad. I mean, it's just to show this, this is what you're up against. I mean, now you're five points behind Manchester City. And uh, the way City plays doesn't take toll on its players but when you watch this game between Liverpool and Arsenal I mean you can see there's a lot of effort and you know physically and mentally these players get drained in these games and uh, from your point of view I mean I mean my takeaway was like okay like I I think like you know I I was kind of disappointed in Arsenal I was expecting more Liverpool were impressive but it seemed like each time one team scored the other team just wanted to like sit back and then uh, wait a little bit, you know. And then they, they see it's almost like the goal made them come out every time, you know. So what's, what's your take on that one? I think um, Ateta should have learned from Tana last season. It's important to rotate your players, especially if you have midweek fixtures. Um, what team did Arsenal play in the Champions League this week? I can't remember. 
Um, Shakhtar. Yes. You don't need to play your you don't need to play your starting eleven versus Shakhtar when you know you have Liverpool coming up in the weekend. Now you see um, Ateta is known for never changing his starting eleven. It's the most assured starting eleven you'll ever get in the Premier League. But then the upside to that is you know the tactics work, the combinations work, players get to know each other. The downside is when now you have to make emergency substitutions, then it takes um, time for your subs to you know get into the game. And so Ateta needed to have rotated his squad during the Shakhtar game to give his players you know time to get used to the system. For example, um, in Ateta's game, if a player makes an error, we're never seeing that play again. We uh-huh. haven't seen Zinchenko in a while. Tomiyasu, I think he made a mistake. I can't remember in which game. And since then, now you see because he doesn't even play anytime he's given a chance to play. He's it was the Man City game, the Man City game that he gave a back pass to De Bruyne. Yeah, you see. And then now when you don't give your player confidence, um, he lacks fitness. When the player comes in, he gets injured. Or because you don't want to rotate your your starting lineup. And you see now that is what will affect Ateta and he should have learned from Ten Hag. If City loses players, Rodri has been out, but you can't tell Rodri has been out. Mm. Kovacic has stepped in uh, seamlessly. Mati- Matias Nunes has stepped in seamlessly, you see, because of that rotation. Um, Chelsea were being criticised for having, I don't know, 100 players. But because of the squad rotation, they're able to keep up with the tactics of the squad. So I just feel that Ateta should, um, you know, just rotate. But one positive thing I can say about today is he came to play today's game. You know, there are times where you need to forget about the rest of the fixtures Mm. and make sure that the game at hand, you come to give the fans what they want. And today, Liverpool was actually struggling, if we're honest. Liverpool wasn't seeing um, Raya that much the way Arsenal was, you know, giving Keller a hard time. We haven't seen Van Dijk in panic mode for a very long time, you know. Um, he had to substitute Robertson. Robertson hasn't been in panic mode in a long time. So we can see that Ateta set up today to win. He yeah. came to win. He came to, you know, back down. If it wasn't for the subs, I don't think Ateta would have played defensively. Yeah, but I think, you know, um, I, I personally think like we're looking at the, this is this is the ceiling for Arteta at the moment. You know, I don't think it's going to get much better for Arsenal with this. Uh, I think at best this season, Arsenal can probably get second place. That's that's how I see it. I don't, I don't, even Liverpool as well. I don't really see anyone beating anyone. I just think it's just looking at the way they're playing and the injuries and the level that's needed, you know, and it's not just this game. I mean, the previous games, you know, uh, playing some of the other teams. I mean, you got to be on your game every week. you got to take your chances when you need to take them. But from Slots and Liverpool's point of view, I mean, it's a good point for them. They got what they needed. Uh, they showed they showed great signs when they, they attacked. Under Liverpool, Slot does play a different system. It's not the clubs, you know, all out, you know, attacking you. There's a, there's a lot more compact. There's a lot more control in this game, a lot more defensive thinking of it. Uh, you can see you can see that by that they don't have a high line like they used to on the club, but you know this game, um, man. I'm just I'm just thinking, man. What, what else? What else? What can Arsenal do, man? And what can Liverpool do, man? Like they playing at each other. These are the two best teams after City. I mean, what are these guys gonna do? But, but, but I, I think I, I think Abdi uh, after such uh, a performance, yeah, the, the the downside of the start of the season for Arsenal and actually Liverpool have really had the best piece of the cake. So I think uh, the good, the, the only positive side I can look at this, uh, at, at this uh, Arsenal side at this moment is that it's good that this downsideness, the, the, the downside of us, Arteta's uh, tactics and uh, frustrations have come early. And like when you really, <laughs> when you have limited games chasing a team that is already in front. So uh, let's just, have the hope that because it's it's early because we are only nine games uh, out of the 38. So uh, let's hope for for a change before the first half of the of the of the of the, of the matchups of the Premier League. So the I I, I always take a positive side when we when you get these mistakes and uh, sorted early. Unlike when you're really towards the edge and you have yeah, to yeah. and you have to you don't have any other option. So. Uh, 
it, it gives us it gives us room to to improve because now we have to chase five points down the line, which is now something else. And which you see, we uh, Liverpool are yet to play Man City. We've played Man City, so I'm, I'll, I'll look I'll look at the the three teams that are chasing each other each other. So hoping that <laughs> I'm thinking, but Steve, I'm thinking like you know I, I just look at this Arsenal team and I'm like okay, wh- whatever they want to do, I mean they can't do anything without their players. I mean this is this is a squad. Yeah, yeah. This is a squad thing. And they, don't, they don't have the players. Like, well, they, if, if you lose one or two players, is a problem. If you lose five, six players. I mean, forget it, man. That's like, that's just not. You know, I, I, don't, I don't know don't what is happening to, to the right that. wing and left wing of Arsenal for the past yeah. for the past seasons. The, the the left wing, the left one, the left wing and the right wing, we always having players on injuries each and every time. Pierre Oligard. I, I'd like attack. to blame Mateta for that. I'd like to blame Mateta yeah. for today's game because today we knew that Timber wasn't fit. Yeah. If Timber is not fit and you have Kiwi on the bench, um, um, Kiwi, I know I'm a good fullback, right? But then he starts an unfit um, Timber against Salah, and then he plays party against Diaz. So but what is to, that? He had to. But he had to. Kiwi would have got killed by Salah. Kiwi I see. With you, now the the downside is you've lost um, Timber. Yeah, well, no, no, what no. something like, had this happened this to game, Timber? This game was a must. This game was like Arsenal couldn't lose this game. Like there was no, there's no way out of it. Like it would, it would have just killed them, demoralized them. You know, they would. Uh... That's the point where you don't give your players confidence. You'd never see. Um, what's the name of Rico Lewis coming in for Walker? Atleta wouldn't have made that decision. Yeah, but that's yeah, that's you know, we're talking about someone who's done four titles. Let's, let's in a row. give it. Of the best managers so far this season, Hansi Flick. Mm. Hansi Flick is using La Masia against Barcelona, against uh, Madrid and Bayern. Mm. What are the results? You see, sometimes that man management, whereby I know my player is in the best, but I can give him that man management that I can just give him confidence for that one game and he can outperform just that one game. And that's what, you know, Ateta needs to do that man management with specific players who are subs. No, but we were doing all right. But then, you know, then it's almost like we started doing funny transfers again. Like, you know, Marina and, and I don't understand and these, these other kind of players, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not really... But that's, but that's that. Let's let's move on from Arsenal. They, they had their disappointing Arsenal-Liverpool. They had their game today. Uh, point, point, point piece, they took away with that one. But um, let's move to the earlier game. Let's move to the big, the big moment. It just keeps on getting every week, every weekend. It comes and it comes again. And Ten Hag is surviving. He's he's hanging in there, Hillary. He just seems to be. I don't know. I don't know what he has, man. I, I, someone was telling me the other day, man. I'm thinking they're telling me like, are you sure like Ten Hag hasn't done some deal with Epstein where he told them, don't worry, man. You keep, <laughs> you keep, you keep your yeah. joint. I, I got something on these United owners. <laughs> the best thing. Best move Tenag made was extending his contracts yeah. because guess what? I can play the shittiest football. And guess what? If you suck me, the, yeah. the payout is going to be big. Yeah. So either way, it's a win win for me. You keep me, I'm getting paid. You suck me, I'm getting paid. Okay, but, but, tell, me, tell, but tell me from your view. I mean, what's the thought process from these new owners from Ineos coming in? Like they came together quite recently and they gave him a vote of confidence. So, and then if he keeps doing this, if this is where he's producing. That is, yeah, that's what is shocking most Man United fans because we know that the group that was assembled was supposed to be like an Avengers, you know, a Marvel team mm. where we know, you know, they, they, they're known for making the right decisions. But when it has come to Ten Hag, we absolutely have no clue what Ineos is about right now. Nobody has any clue what Ineos is going to do. Because a good team, right now we only have one win in 11 European games. We have, I don't know how many wins this season in the Premier League. Yeah, yeah, my God, it's, it's ridiculous. Yes. In win, almost November and we're still in the middle part of the second page. You know, we're almost fighting relegation. And yet, you know, the, the sad part of today is Casemiro scored um, an equalizer against West Ham. And he started smiling and was happy. This is how much we've reduced Casemiro. He started <laughs> smiling after that. I was so shocked. Stevie, listen to this. <laughs> smiling and he scored a 70th minute equalizer against oh West Ham. 
and we are fighting to get back to the top half. Not even fighting to get to top four or top three to the to the first page. That's what you're fighting for. At this point, it has become so emotional that we can't even look at the facts as Man United fans because it's just an emotional roller coaster for us right now. If you look at the performance against um, Fenerbahce, and yeah. now you look at today's performance, you know, United. Do we have tactics at this point? I don't know. You remove um, Rashford to bring in um, Diallo when you know you needed to remove Ganacho to bring in Rashford. Uh, when you know you needed to remove um, Ganacho and take Rashford to the other wing. I, I don't understand. Honestly, yeah. I don't even think the, the assistant coaches understand because I think even Ruud sometimes sits on the bench and sees the subs that are being made and he's like, I, I can't even. Anything. Let me yeah. let me get, let me get Steve in this one. Steve, you can you can yeah. hear the frustration with Hillary right there. I mean, to go in week in week out, uh, Man United producing the way they're producing, and it just seems the board and the manager just look at the fans and be like, "Yep, that's that's it. That's what's happening, and we're still here." <laughs> yeah, because actually, Abdi, when it comes to uh, you know the the, the uh, there, is, there is that perspective that Manchester United had created in our minds of the quality of a team they are not just the managers not just the individual players but now the image the image that is painted let me talk on my behalf the image that is painted in my head of Manchester United is now becoming a shitty team because they cannot you can not even I think even for the for people who who engage themselves in betting I think even if you're a Manchester fan you won't find yourself betting for your own team because it's just it's just disappointing because you can, we can see that they, are, they have a couple of good players in their team. That, that one I cannot, I cannot dispute that fact. So you, you get yourself wondering and asking yourself, so where, where does the rain start beating Manchester United? Because they do have quality players, not like they have shitty players. It's just yeah. that they're playing a shitty game, you know. So you, you get yourself really wondering. Shitty so, game. Yeah. Really shitty game. They, they can't stand up for, they, they can't put up a fight against small teams. So you, know, you ask yourself, are they just waiting? to play those big games and just have disappointing draws to 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 pull back the people who are chasing the league or something like that because now you I I I find myself in a situation whereby I cannot categorize Manchester right now in the in the in the in the, in the big teams like in the Premier League at, at, in this season like in the top 5 the people are taking their spots. It's, so, it's not even in the top seven. Don't even you, say top. Because yeah, it's it's really it's really <laughs> disappointing because you can you we don't understand because it's not that they don't have players, they have a manager. So you wonder what is the manager doing with the players he has because he has good players. What is he doing about it? Because it's so I, from yes, as a fan, I, I get happy because we rival we have rival fans, but you wonder as a, as as a team, this is not a football team anymore because now they're in the likes of of uh, now they're taking the switching positions with teams like uh, Newcastle. We used to be in those positions now. Newcastle are, are, are pushing for Newcastle and Aston Villa pushing in the in the spaces up here. So uh, it's really it's really hard to tell what their problem is because they're being bitten in in and out. It's just what it is. Yeah, well, that's well, that's how that's how it's going to be for a while. I think uh, my United fans has got a lot more frustration coming ahead of them. Uh, guys, I guess that's that's what we have time for. Just just to quickly before we leave, we can give a, a little quick shout out to Tottenham losing to Crystal Palace. <laughs> Again, I didn't see that coming. Against yeah. that one. So and we didn't get see that coming. Today's VR um, come coming the weekend. Yeah, VR of course. VR is always a classic man. Coming, I mean, you saw you saw uh, Luis Diaz today, Liverpool game, kicking the ball away, didn't get yellow card. There's so much for consistency. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Actually, he did it twice. He also did it to yeah, yeah, the yeah. throw in so twice, and nothing happened. I love it. Uh, and then yeah, so basically the way it's looking right now, it seems to be like you know, or everything's back into order. Man United on top, 23 points, one point ahead oh. Liverpool at 22. Then after that, Arsenal, Aston Villa, Chelsea, Brighton, 18, 18, 17. So. Yeah, it just, it just seems like Manchester City sit, sitting on top of the way they where they're known to be, but I guess that's what it is for us, guys. Uh, let's come back again when we can. Thank you, Hillary and Steve. Appreciate your time, guys. Thank you very much. All right, goodbye.